Hi everyone, I'm Hao Shen, and in this presentation, we will cover distributed training. So why should we use distributed training? There are multiple answers. The first one is single GPU does not scale well on very large models and very mar uh, large data sets. And second answer is that most foundation models currently are distributed trained. For example, Llama 3, which is trained on 16 H100 GPUs. And to train on 16 H100 GPUs, you will need distributed training across different multiple nodes and multiple GPUs. And uh, for this course, your project will be needing the distributed training for faster running. And your cargo homeworks can also be iterated faster and finish earlier with distributed training. So when should we use distributed training? A short answer is whenever you have multiple GPUs, even though you only have one node or one machine for distributed training. And the PyTorch naturally supports multiple types of distributed training. Uh, in this presentation, we will mainly cover the first two, which is data parallel and the distributed data parallel. Uh, you should note that data parallel is actually not really distributed training, but it allows you to use multiple GPUs. And there are other types of uh, distributed training uh, supported in PyTorch, which is fully shared uh, data parallel. It, it splits your model into different processes in tensor parallel and pipeline parallel. If you are interested in this uh, other types of distribution, you should check by yourself. And uh, we'll first go through data parallel. Data parallel is the simplest way to allow, to, uh, allow you to use multiple GPU for, for your training. And it's as simple as adding one line of code after you initialize your model by wrapping your model through data parallel. And uh, what did this data parallel do? This data parallel it parallels your data into multiple GPUs. So the master process splits the batch data to other GPUs and each GPU performs the forward pass and the master process gathers the output from other GPUs and uh, it computes the loss on the master process. And the, the data parallel wrapping for the model does everything for you. So you don't need to uh, actually manually do this. However, there's one limitation of data parallel, which means uh, it relies on the, uh, a master process, which means the master process is usually overloaded as shown in this figure here. Next, we'll go through distributed data parallel. Distributed data parallel is a true distributed training across all GPUs, which means it's multi-processing and each process is equally overloaded. And in distributed data parallel, your code is running in a multi-processing way on each GPU. Your data is split into n GPU partitions for each GPU to load, and your loss is also computed on each GPU. Your gradient is secretly gathered and summed across all the GPUs. So how do we set up and launch data uh, distribute data parallel? There are in total five steps. The first step is set up. You should insert this three line of code as the beginning of your uh, code or script. So the first line is initialize the process group for distributed data parallel. It tells the program that you are using distributed data parallel. So it runs the scripts uh, in a multi-processing way. And the second line is to get the rank for, from your uh, initialized distributed training. The rank is basically an ID for your process. And the third line is getting the device ID, which is basically the rank if you are using only one node. Uh, so the device ID and the rank basically means the GPU ID. And the, the second step is for model. You need to wrap your model through the DDP wrapper. And the DDP wrapper is similar to a uh, data parallel wrapper. You just need to wrap your model through this wrapper and set the device ID. The third step will be data loader. As we said earlier, uh, in distributed data parallel, your data is split into n partition for each process to run. So you need to set up the assembler, which is distributed across all the processes and you need to phase this sampler into your data loader. And uh, the fourth step is for training. Before each epoch starts, you need to set epoch for your sampler implicitly, ex explicitly, because the sampler need to shuffle the data for each epoch, and this line of code does, does the shuffling for you. And after you set all these four steps, you can launch distributed training by calling torch run and setting the number of GPU for the uh, unprocessed per node arguments of torch run and you can just put your script name after the torture to be able to use DDP. Thanks, that's all for this presentation.